What's going on, everybody? This is WBDC, where Bitcoin lives. Glad to have everybody listening. It's been a good weekend. I hope that everybody had an enjoyable one themselves. Uh, this is Joe Blackburn, your host, and I am excited today about you know bringing on nick uh saperano and you know when we bring people on and obviously i try to have a guest each and every episode and you know there's there's just so many different types of people in this crypto space i uh, i like to focus on as everybody knows you know making the space as easy and as you know just usable as possible um i have I, you, you could almost say like i ask a lot of like the quick fires at the end of each uh session um about you know like, do you, could you see Bitcoin as a political party or could you see, you know, Bitcoin having a political party of some sort? And the reason why I always ask that question is because personally speaking, you know, I like to think about the blockchain as a political agenda, you know, and when I usually hear that, I typically think of that as like a negative, like someone's got a political agenda. Well, we all have an agenda. And like, if I'm hungry, my agenda is to go get some food, right? That's not a negative. And I love the transparency of the blockchain blockchain for government, maybe not on an individual basis, but I do love it on a big basis, a governmental basis. And the idea that blockchain can influence the government or the way that people vote or the way that people are able to know what they're voting for, to me, is like the, the overall goal, like for Joe personally. But to even get to that point, to even implement those things, certain dominoes have to fall. And that is people just got to start understanding what the what the blockchain offers and, you know, where we're going with the blockchain. And that to me, I ask, I ask people these questions all the time. People that have been in crypto or they're traders, they're crypto, you know, hodlers, whatever they might be. And I'm like, what do you want to get out of blockchain? And unfortunately, the answer is 99.9% .9 the same. Um, I want to make some money. I'm like, yeah, me too. But is that it? Like, I mean, there's other ways to do it besides this, you know, hellhole of crypto space sometimes, you know, and, you know, it's just, you know, people are just so short, short sighted sometimes. And there's all this, you know, but I understand it. I've been that person. I'm not always not that person. Right. I mean, I can be that way. But Today, we're going to bring on, you know, a, a, a team or we're bringing on Nick, who's part of a team that, that goes back to, you know, trying to create something that does make this make sense more. You know, I mean, when I get on PayPal, when I get on Venmo, you know, or when I'm trying to go, you know, check out, check out my, my, my uh, checking account, I don't sit there and, and wonder how this thing's working. It just works. And that's all I care about. Like, can I get this money from here to there? Or can I make sure that what I'm logging into is is my own account, et cetera. Right. And then nobody else is getting into it. So I, I say that for this reason is as, as complicated as the, as the blockchain can be as complicated as crypto can be for sometimes, you know, pe there are people out there trying to make this to, to fix this situation. And that just comes with, you know, the opportunities that, that people find, you know, that there's big holes in this space and they joke, they go and try to correct, correct it. And that's kind of what Nick's going to come on. I'm actually going to bring him on very shortly, you know, and I'll let Nick introduce himself and uh, we'll hear a little bit about him, but, you know, take this seriously, uh, listen to how people are transitioning this space. And of course, you know, I wish nothing but the best for Nick and the Divi team for the Divi project. But, you know, if, if, if he doesn't do it, somebody's going to, it looks like Divi's got a good string, stranglehold on at least the concepts here. And this is why obviously I'm bringing him on. I wouldn't bring him on if I didn't think they had a, uh, a pretty good uh, opportunity to 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 do something uh, special you know but uh but and also i need to make this very clear this is not an endorsement of the divi project per se as far as on a, on a bitcoin radio level you know and bitcoin radio level is not sitting here saying hey go get this or i don't own this token it doesn't mean i won't one day um this is not a paid interview or it's not a paid you know uh endorsement of any sort this is just literally something i find very interesting and they were voted on. I said I was going to interview the top two that we voted on in Crypto Coin Trader, and uh, Nick happened to be the person that it, that was uh, in second place. So they get an interview. But I just want to be very transparent about that up from our, our perspective. Anyways, all right, let's go ahead and bring Nick on before I get even more boring. What's up, Nick? Welcome to Bitcoin Radio, man. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Really, really glad we could finally make this work. Now, uh, you've obviously been someone who's been part of the CCT community for some time. You, you've, uh, you're the CIO, and you know, you're really involved in the DV project in m multiple ways. If you could, why don't you just introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, so I'm Nick Sapinero. I'm the Chief Information Officer at the DV project. Um, so basically, I, I oversee all the development of all of our technologies and try to make them make sense to the outside world, um, which is why Absolutely. I do things like this. 
like this coming on awesome shows like yours for sure man for sure now and what you guys have done and what you're creating seems to be something that is is what's desired in this space you know and there's other people who have tried before in the past i'm sure there's more that are trying right now or in the future but you guys have stuck out to me for the last few months i've, I've noticed you know more and more people talking about divi and and what you're what you're trying to accomplish and i, I mean that and i say that in a good way you know is that you're making some noise there's some waves coming around you know where you know divi's popping up here popping up over there so before we even get into what divi actually is let's let's talk about nick real quick nick how'd you even get in the space what 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 inspired you to start doing all this i mean you know nothing crazy much like a, a lot of people that are in the space i started as an investor bought eth when it was like a dollar um and of course kind of forgot about it after a while after the dow hack i gave up uh, for a while and then um was pulled back into it actually as a as a freelancer for for divi um and that's actually how i started this company and uh but of course i, I throughout that time that three or two year span i was i was studying blockchain quite a bit and and did again follow uh cryptocurrency after after the uh the burns had worn off a little bit <laughs> I, absolutely i mean and i can understand all that too um but and, and that's you know it's a very relatable you know i guess introduction or, or at least how you get started where where is it that you uh you started taking the space more seriously though you know obviously divi popped up but you know what what gave you the desire to say hey shoot look i've been burned here but i'm gonna go ahead and try to start a project like how did how did you start making sense of that well really as much as the dow was a disappointment it actually opened my eyes to what was possible with smart contracts and with Ethereum specifically. Um, and that's when I started to, as a developer, get a little bit more interested in that aspect of it, the technical aspect, and less interested in the trading, the day trading stuff. Um, and that's when I just started digging into, you know, Andreas Antonopoulos' book, um, oh, yeah. Mastering Bitcoin and things like that, and started realizing like, whoa, this is actually pretty revolutionary and this needs to be in everyone's hands like right now you know um and then i got of course got the opportunity at divi and, and jumped at it for sure man no and again you know i'm glad that you were able to come on the show today because you know much like what i talk about and what i try to profess out loud and make sure people know is that i'm just a huge fan of mass adoption for more reasons than just bitcoin needs to go up one day and as my introduction said you know i do see this as a political I don't want to say uprising or even revolution, although it is both of those in some senses, it's not that for everybody, right? And so I've got to be always be very careful with how the audience perceives what I'm saying. So much like what I believe, you know, I know that not only do, do you believe that you actually went out and did something about it with the Divi project. And that is, we've got to make this user experience and this, you, this user interface even, you know, really easy. This is this, I mean, it's just the concept can be such a deterrent to some people, you know, the moment they download a Coinbase app and then they got to bring it and they got to send it to somebody else. I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? Or how do I, what is he, what does this even mean? This wallet? Well, that's kind of what the Divi project. And I mean, I don't want to say that's the only thing you guys are doing and we'll get into that but let's just start off with that concept you know what is your philosophy behind the Diddy project there nick when we started in 2017 we there were even worse user experiences out there and coinbase has, has greatly improved mm -hmm. but it's still you know there's still complexities Absolutely. to all of these things um and we figured you know there has to be a, a movement at some point to actual usability and actual user experience because if you look at every other finance app you mentioned venmo and paypal at the beginning of the show, right? And those are obviously pristine user experiences for the most part. Everything has problems, but sure. if we can't if we can't make something that's at least as good, but hopefully better, um, then it's never going to be adopted by normal people. <laughs> Sorry to say normal, but you know, non technical people. Yeah, yeah, say. no, that's the truth though. You have people who are not in crypto, in other words. Right, exactly. So we took that um, and built a philosophy around it that really is focused on user experience first. Um, so, of course, we created our one click masternodes, but we didn't want to stop just at, at masternodes um, because we see that there's a need for a vertically integrated ecosystem, just like um, Tesla. Elon Musk saw that there's a problem uh, with with car manufacturing, the whole car value chain is staggered and, and piecemeal together. And then the user or the driver in this case ends up paying for all that, right? Um, so he created a, a company where he's designing and building and even providing the fuel for cars, you know, fuel, so to speak. Yeah. He built a vertically integrated ecosystem. And while it's really capital intensive initially, it's paying off 
in, in a major way as, as we're seeing with Tesla. Um, so we wanted to do the same thing with crypto, basically. You know, I've actually been saving this analogy for the right show. And although, you know, this kind of is the right show in some some respects, it's not really the ideal one, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And you'll okay. understand what I mean here in a second. But you brought up, you know, how with Tesla and Elon Musk and, you know, how, when, when Tesla was first, the idea of Tesla and to be able to, to charge, you know, these, these batteries, right? If you're driving across country, where are you going to stop and charge your battery at? You know, there, I mean, right. it's not cheap or easy to charge your battery. It just isn't. And, you know, for someone, it's got to be quick, you know, I mean, quick enough right. for it to be on a trip. And I look at, you know, the, the foresight that Elon and Tesla had to have to be able to say, hey, we don't have any users yet. We don't have any drivers. We don't have anybody who needs this, but we can fix this problem prior to and then make it every make it really easy for anybody who wants a Tesla to integrate this into everyday life. Now, obviously, that's a very quick and 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 blanket generic statement about how Elon Musk tackled all this. But you face the same issue and many other crypto companies do as well. And that is, you know, horse before the carriage, right? You know, I mean, like you got to make sure that both are going to work out or, you know, you're kind of, you know, doing this for nothing. So your foresight is that not only can you service the people now, but the biggest audience that hasn't entered into the crypto space yet, you know, which is, it's, it's coming. We, we anticipate it's some, in, in some respect, you know, you're, you're here to service them right now. And that's, and that's what you're looking to do. Is that correct? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it has to be from start to finish. So you can't, I mean, Coinbase is incredibly important, don't get me wrong. And as, as just like all the exchanges are um, in terms of getting people into altcoins and things like that. But all these things require you to learn something new each time you do it. Um, and each time that that happens, you're pretty much losing a subset of potential users. So it has to be, in our opinion, all in one very nicely packaged uh, ecosystem. Yeah, for sure. You know, and Coinbase, I mean, I still use Coinbase to this day as someone who's seasoned yeah. and, and, and very involved and who initially had his, his account banned for a year for whatever reason, probably for playing like the online casino or something like that. I'm not going to yeah. lie, you know, but that, but regardless, you know, I, I, I see where you're going with this and I like the concept. So let's go ahead and dive into, you know, kind of understand the reasons why, but what is it you've actually built? What is the Divi project? Sure. So right now um, we have a desktop application and of course our own blockchain. So we're not an ERC-20 token. Um, we did do a, a crowd sale with, with an ERC-20 back in 2017, but we have our own main chain, uh, main net launched in September 27th, or I mean, sorry, September 27th of last year. Uh, so coming up on a year there. Um, and right now, what you can do is sort of play with our proof of concept, which is our one click master node. So the first thing we decided to tackle was the, the aspect of crypto that allows you to actually earn it. Um, and if you don't know what master nodes are for your audience, it's basically uh, it's, it's similar to mining or, or staking in that you're running a full copy of the blockchain. And uh, for doing so, you basically get rewarded in crypto um, to keep it as non-technical as possible. Yeah, yeah, um, so what's that? In fact, that one might have been the, the easiest description uh, <laughs> of Masternode. Thank you. I've had a lot of time to practice that one. <laughs> you have. No, I, yeah. I like the idea of the one-click Masternode too. And as you as you noted, you know, you're running a full copy, a full ledger of the entire transaction. You know, all the transactions that have ever happened on your personal blockchain, on the Divi Project's personal blo blockchain, everything is is being run through that one-click Masternode. Why did you find this to be uh, one of the one of the main you know uh, selling points? Well, first of all, masternodes can be run on really simple hardware, so you don't need to invest in a mining rig or any or learn really anything about um, you know computers at the low level in order to run one. So that uh, fit well with our low barrier to entry sort of vision, um, and we believe that staking and masternodes are a more efficient way to scale blockchains. Um, but I won't go too deep down that rabbit hole. Um, so yeah, masternodes, they're easy to set up theoretically and they pay you back uh, and you can run them on any computer. But the problem was, you know, with Dash or some of the other uh, cryptocurrencies that offer masternodes, they're extremely difficult to actually get running uh, if you don't have technical knowledge already. So we found, found that that was a, a low hanging fruit that should be uh, fixed. It should be one click, just like everything else that you install on your computer is basically one click. Um, so that's that's where that sort of thought process came from. It helps you know, us build our network and 
and yeah, expand. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, I look at it like adding a Chrome extension, right? A, adding a Chrome extension, exactly. it, you know, is, is really simple. And everybody knows how to do it at this point. You know, not everybody may be using any Chrome extensions, but most of us are, I would say, if you're on Chrome. You know, but yeah. you make it that simple to be able to, I mean, of course, I'm being generic and I'm using an analogy here. But, you know, it is simple. And I, although I have not personally um, uh, actually installed a Masternode, like I said in the beginning, I don't own any Divi projects of the Divi uh, token. But uh, but I'm rooting for you. I, I, and I really think that you're onto something really special here. And there's two things that I've I've noticed here that, that make the most sense to me. Number one is you have the user in mind. And number two is that what we all say about crypto is that, you know, we, we want people to be using it, but there's more than just using it. It's, you know, being able to make sense of using it. And that's what you're tackling. You're, 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 and I kind of noticed, mentioned this earlier on with the Tesla analogy, but you know, you're, you're anticipating users, but you understand right now that people need to use it as well. But you're 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 doing this in anticipation that it's going to get bigger. What is it that you guys see in the future? What, where is Divi five years from now? What I mean, obviously, you know, you you be uh, you're going to have to be a little bit speculative. But you know, we're not talking about the price of the token. We're not talking about you know whatever as far as monetary wealth goes. We're talking about what is Divi Project doing five years from now. Yeah, I think that we'll be, of course, much further along as far as actually having more of the services we want to offer uh, in our in our financial service suite, if you want to call it that. Um, so you may or may not have heard that we just basically purchased a, a controlling share of a remittances company in Costa Rica. Um, and this allowed us to thank you so much. Um, yeah, I mean. It's a huge step for us because now we have all of the licensure we need in order to actually, you know, provide fiat on ramps and debit cards and and uh, even even bank account numbers um, that can be used internationally. So I see us really as being a, a, a much more fully fledged financial services company or fintech company uh, five years from now to where people are actually using it, not just for crypto or not, not just for Divi, but also for Bitcoin, also for ETH sure. and also for fiat, for their fiat needs. I mean, hopefully we can start to replace some of the Venmo user base um, and the cash app user base with no, this app. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, I like w what you guys are doing and, you know, for, for those at home who may or may not know that this is a big deal, you know, for them to be able to integrate themselves into the banking atmosphere, you know, it's not like banks are going away, right? I mean, like as much as people in Bitcoin or crypto think that, oh yeah, like F the banks, we're going to, we're going to just, we're going to burn them all down. That's not going to happen. I mean, our market cap just in Bitcoin alone right now is like a drop in a bucket compared to how much money's out there. And the banks, and if they wanted to like just crush Bitcoin, they would just like buy a bunch of Bitcoin and then just make a bunch of people rich and just be like, F y'all, I'm going to just throw this Bitcoin away forever. Right. I mean, they could do it, you know, like they could absolutely do this and it wouldn't be a big effort to, to do such. They right. could put up a big sell wall. I mean, it's going to be a big buy wall, right? And they put up a huge sell wall and just, just collect and start soaking in all the Bitcoin. And if we really wanted to screw ourselves over, we could sit there and think, you know, like the banks are going to go away. Anybody who just sits there and thinks the banks are going to go away is not privileged to to understand that that's never going to happen. So you have to make this make sense to everybody. And what you just said and your your recent, you know, acquisitions and um, and how you're trying to go about this, I think absolutely makes sense. And as noted, you know, although I do think politically speaking, Bitcoin has a place in this in this world. I mean, 200, 500, 600, 1,000 years from now, Bitcoin might just be a, well, I expect Bitcoin, hopefully, best case scenario, we're a part of a history book where Bitcoin became and, and revolutionized the way that we see money. How does Divi back up to what the principles of Bitcoin are? And where does Divi, the Divi project, fall in with where Bitcoin should be going? We really think the same as you. We, we feel that Bitcoin is and always will be a necessity to the cryptocurrency industry in one way or another. Sure. Um, but that said, it, it really, it's an open blockchain, right? So even though Satoshi initially envisioned it as a digital form of, of currency, cash, it, it kind of took a different direction over time. And while it can be used to pay for things, it's, it's not necessarily equipped to scale with the needs of you know, the modern day consumers. Sure. Um, but that said, it's clearly, you know, the king and it backs all of the whole, the whole crypto market. Every pair, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It needs to exist, just like gold needs to exist, right? In order Absolutely. for money to have value, even though it's not on the gold standard, there's still, you know, it's still connected. Um, so we are working really hard to build interoperability solutions that allow for the easy transition between Bitcoin, Divi, and fiat. And you kind of touched on it for a second there. Um, I believe that yeah, this is an FU to the banks, really, what we're doing is FU to the banks because we're taking a, a Trojan horse approach, basically. We're becoming the banker. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And we're getting in there into that whole ecosystem from the inside, and you can change from the inside, I, I think. Um, and it, it all, again, revolves around making Bitcoin usable um, and accessible and interoperable with other chains, of Divi included, but of many, many other chains. Now, it's a, all good points. And, uh, you know, and I, I pretty much completely agree with everything you just said. Uh, for those of you listening at home today, if you don't have, if you've never looked at Nick or looked up Nick, he looks just like Patrick Mahomes. So just watch your <laughs> Chiefs game from point. You'll be able to see what Nick looks like. You got the cool hair, you know, you know, you know uh, essentially the hair and uh, prob probably more so, you know, just the, that, that, that sturdy cheekbone that you got, you know, like there's just a lot of similarities in the way they look. And I just, obviously, I wish I looked like Patrick McHolmes. I told you that off camera. And I did. I'll totally you. take the, I'll take it. You know? I will too. There's more people I can look Have like. you ever been mistaken for Patrick McHolmes walking? around I, I did have a guy i was at a i was at an event recently and a guy came up to me it was just like you know an outdoor event the guy comes up to me and he like kind of rushed over and then as he got closer he like starts to slow down he's like, <laughs> that's awesome then, <laughs> like, i know what you're thinking <laughs> yeah he's like i thought i kind of thought for a second that you were patrick Rose. i'm like uh no it's Sorry, Dude, look, <laughs> you should. I would own it. Like, I would just walk into places, you know, just I would just look what Patrick Mahomes grow your hair out just a little bit more, bro. I mean, yeah. carbon copy, dude. You, you don't I have know. to try hard for Halloween, you know, if you really want to. I could take advantage of this. Yeah, that's right. Just throw on a Chiefs jersey. Exactly. Good. Boom. Over with, you know. <laughs> Anyways, no, obviously, that's all a compliment. I, I'm a big fan of Patrick Mahomes, first off. You know, I watched him today. They played the Ravens, and I think they won. Yeah, he's an incredible player. Yeah, he is. He's I didn't uh, see the game. Look, uh, I, I guess he went to Texas Tech, too. And, you know, you're a West Coast guy, you know, but. I mean, I love the, I love football. I love, you know, uh, especially college football. I, I like it more than NFL, yeah. honestly. But I didn't even know who Patrick Mahomes really was. I just heard his name on Sports Center a couple of times. And anyways, yeah. but now I get to meet his brother, you know, which is cool. No. <laughs> anyways, all right. So sorry for the uh, the brief uh, interruption of the actual content, but uh, we'll move back into the Divi project. I just thought that was worth noting. Um, all right. So Nick, you've all you guys have been working on this since 2017. It's been, you know, a, it's it's a, really a, your life's work, and I consider what I do my life's work. Right now it's because you know in crypto it's there's not really a lot that you can like you just you can't really compare it to a lot you know um, and you can compare you know the startup environment sure you can compare you know getting a paycheck yes but really like crypto is still yet to be there's no certainties in which way the blockchain is going to be used and how often it's going to be used for that matter you know and i mean what scares me the most for a lot of projects is that they don't have the certainties and that you're going to lose people and some capacity to the actual tech world, especially good developers. You know, at some point yeah. we're either going to run out of money because there's nobody new coming in, or we're going to have this huge boom where it's going to be really, this can be the opposite of what I just said. And they, they won't be able to, 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 to stop people from trying to get into crypto, which we, we slightly saw that in 2017. I do right. anticipate another gold rush of sorts, not the same, the ICO gold rush per se, but I do see that these other like IBM and a lot of the other projects are going to be big companies that are starting to implement and use and experiment with blockchain. That's all coming. Now tell me on a scalability level does divi have any connections to something that might come along and be like hey we want to integrate you what are some things that maybe somebody who's holding your coin are looking forward to well there's definitely obviously the potential of of lowering fees in banking um so that's like one very small uh well i guess it's not that small of a goal no, but yeah it, I mean, it's, it's it's a great goal too so that's definitely you know one step um of course you know We've been offered to to become the the collateralization of of uh, fees on exchanges and things like that, similar to Binance Coin and, and things of that nature. Sure. Um, but I think the the beauty of of blockchain, and you kind of just said it, is the fact that it is an open source protocol that can can go in any direction. I know that for us, for our you know what we're building for our community is um, is a, a finance application, right? So um, you'll be able to one day uh, through some of our partnerships get paid. Uh, instantly sort of like a streaming payment service with a, a company that we're working with. 
um, of course, use your your cryptocurrency in the real world and things like that. Um, but it's open, you know, build something on it. It's it's totally yours. You know, it's we're just one company that's building stuff for it. Well, you guys are building something, you know, potentially that could be really, really revolutionary, even inside a revolutionary area, you know, and when when actually when I say it's revolutionary for this area, it's not because you're doing something different. It's because you're merging the difference with the similarities, you know, and that's something that people they take for granted until you get into crypto. You realize how difficult things can be and the responsibilities. And, you, you know, that that's because, though, we're taking control of our own money. And when you do that, there's a lot of, of, of you know, responsibility for yourself that comes along with that. That doesn't appeal to a lot of people. So does this allow people to understand, you know, you do control your own money, but there's some protection? And is it that bridge? Is it that merging of responsibility with some ease of access? Yeah, I think it was actually to bring up Andreas Antonopoulos again. I think he's the one that kind of opened our eyes to this pathway philosophy. So you're building a pathway for your user into whatever you whatever you want them to use rather than expecting everybody to learn everything and read all of your blogs and watch all your videos it's just not going to happen right the average person is just not going to go through all of that hassle they still so, care actually they don't i mean why would you it's yep. it's super interesting to us but that's because we're deep in deep in the game you know what exactly. i mean yep. um so you, you have to build technologies that at the same time as they're onboarding customers or, or clients or users are educating the user at the same time. So um, yes, I mean, security is obviously a huge uh, focus of ours, but that said, we don't necessarily want to play the police. Um, you know, your keys are still your crypto. If, if you lose your keys, you know, we're not going to back that up sure. for you. We, we still want to be a, a decentralized, you know, protocol and all of that. Well said. Um, thanks. But the bottom line is if we can build things that, do increase the user's knowledge of what they're using as they're using it. So that's that's definitely one of our goals. You know, and what you said is is perfect. I I one hundred percent you know appreciate what you, how you just said that. And that's the, the idea of being in crypto and blockchain isn't so that you know we can let somebody else handle all of our dirty work, right? I mean, and when I say dirty work, I mean just like the aggravating stuff, like the the stuff that just that. The, the stuff that pisses you off, like, man, where are my keys at for this this stupid wallet, right? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've said that exact phrase. Where are my keys? Jeez, like, I mean. <laughs> I, uh, it's just like in real life. Right here? I'm always losing my keys. Exactly, you know, like, where did I write that shit down at? Anyways, yeah. but, you know, th th that's the point, man. If you're not, I mean, obviously, I have kind of um, streamlined, you know, my ability to, to remember where my keys are. And it only takes for losing them once to realize I got to be a little bit more responsible with this. And yeah. I remember, you know, just, just the first time like that I had to, I mean, when, you know, I mean, I hate to say this cause I mean, I'm putting myself out there a little bit, but I mean, there was a really long period where I just screenshotted my wallet keys and just sent them to my email. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I literally titled the subject, whatever wallet I was on to my Gmail account. Right. Oh, no. I mean, keep on. This was way ways back. I've been hacked like several times since then and learned my lesson, but, yeah. um, but that, that, I mean, I would literally write down all my keys now. So for all you hackers listening, you know, you're going to actually have to come to my house if you're going to try to steal my shit, which I please don't. Um, that was not, a, that was not a, I was not trying to challenge you. Uh, but I, I, I fortunately did take them out of my Gmail account and deleted all the other stuff after I lost about $9,000, you know? And, um, you know, what, what to me, you know, it's, it's very hard to explain this, this circumstance to people though, who are not in the blockchain. How do you think this, this space will evolve though? You know, and although, like you said, we're not trying to, we're still trying to say decentralized, we're, we're still got your private keys, but there's got to be a system at some point that does make this a little bit easier just to allow people to come in. I think Coinbase has done a great job right now, but that's, you still don't technically own your Bitcoin, right? Right. You, you, I mean, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. I mean, would you agree with that? Exactly. Right. I, so 100%. where, where does this line mesh? Like, how do we get? How do we get from point A to point B? I mean, you guys are the problem solvers here. I'm just the one talking about it, right? So what do you see as the as the bridge? How do we get this better? And what is Divi doing about it? It's something I, I think already about. answered that, sorry. No, it's fine. I mean, it's something I think about quite a bit, actually. And we call it the $5 wrench attack, right? Because if yeah. somebody does show up at your house with a, a wrench they bought at Home Depot, they could just beat you over the head until you give them your private key, right? <laughs> or your I mean, mnemonic. I do have an answer for that, but. Um... <laughs> yeah, well, some people do, right? right. Um, 
and of course, this is an unlikely scenario, but the, the more likely scenario is what you just described, where you just simply forget where it is, um, where your house burns down, and the keys were in there. You know, there's there's a million reasons that you could lose your, your seed phrase or what have you. I mean, easily, easily on accident, right. like being responsible doesn't mean you're, per you're perfect. Correct. Uh, everyone makes mistakes, but there, I mean, I'm not going to say that we have the perfect solution for this problem. I don't think okay. really anybody does. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we've, we've considered a few, a few different things, um, but we're trying to keep it from being custodial, right? Um, like Coinbase is a custodial exchange. They, they hold your money, they hold your keys. We don't want to be that kind of banking thing. You know? uh, we're trying to beat that. So, um, you know, we've talked about on-chain solutions where, you know, we're, we're saving like little bits in, in hashes and, and basically spreading them around. Um, but only you can decrypt that sort of shotgun of, of key bits, so to speak. Um, but there's, there's just no great answer that I can give you right now, to be honest. No, I mean, and no, like you said, nobody does. Right. And I, I hate to, like, I'm not trying to put you on the spot when I ask those questions. I just like to put them out there because we're kind of just having a conversation, you know, this isn't anything more than just, you know, two, two dudes talking crypto right now. And, um, and I love what Divi and the Divi project's done just, just to kind of capture you know, that, that average Joe experience, you guys have done a fantastic job. In fact, I would probably Thank say you. looking between your website and the expectation of your app, which we'll get to that here next, but you know, if that app looks like what I think it's going to look like based off your website, I mean, you guys have just about the all encompassing opportunity for mom and pop just to show up and, and start being able to, to not just, you know, hold and, and do, do crypto thing, but learn about it and understand it. I mean, I mean, you've done a really great job with that. So let's nice. let's use that and we'll kind of piggyback off that comment to your app. What, what's your app supposed to be? Right. So, you know, as I said, right now you can use our desktop app and deploy master nodes and sure. spend money and things like that. Yep. But the the mobile app is really what the focus is on right now. And that's going to have uh, fiat on and off ramps. So you'll actually be able to purchase crypto with credit card um, or debit card, whatever. Yep. Um, we'll have uh, Bitcoin as well as Divi uh, in the wallet and we'll be adding more coins as we go forward. But those two are our focus at the moment. You'll actually be able to deploy masternodes and stake from the wallet so you can earn money um, as well as, of course, send and do all of those things. Um, if you want to sign up for a debit card, you can do that from the app as well. And we'll be adding a, a bunch more services as we move forward. What's your uh, what's your time frame on those things? Things are looking good. You know, we just hired a bunch of people, so um, things are moving a little faster than they were previously. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm my target right now. I don't give hard dates, but my target is the beginning of next year. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I think that's reasonable. And you know, I think people in crypto are at least. Um, you know, people like to complain on the internet, right? And <laughs> no. All the, all, yeah, exactly. No, no, not since when. Uh, but, but, but I mean, like, I, I'll go and I'll leave a bad review if someone's like a, a like a complete like a hole. You know, like if I have been disrespected. But for the most part, I'm, I mean, this is outside of crypto. You know, just in general, like I'm not going to go leave a review unless I just had a really amazing experience or a really horrible experience, right? That's yeah, so, that's typically how it goes. And you know, that's kind of the way I see crypto has has conform to you know people have these opinions that they'll say like on a in a group message or they might say in like cct like you know underneath a comment but for the most part they're not going to go and like actively bash or like you know actively love a project unless you know there's some really great or really bad things about it and you know it really I, I i encourage everybody to have none of those you don't want any you know exaggerated opinions but you know, going into the expectations of people in crypto, people are patient now. They have to be like they don't have a choice. Yeah. If they yeah. are patient, then you, then they've sold already and they're gone. And so you get a lot of right. the patient people that are left, and um, they might still be a little agitated at some projects this side or the other. But for the most part, you know, I think people understand that. You know, if you say the beginning of the year, you know, that might mean April. You know, I mean, it is what it is. And of course, that's not what you're saying. But in general, people are used to being I, almost let down in crypto. The more yeah. that you can do, the more that you can you can you can perform and and actually come through with, the better you are, right? And that goes for anything. That's not just crypto. But nobody believes anybody in crypto anymore, you know. And right. if, for good if, reason, if, honestly. Absolutely. <laughs> if Divi can come up, the Divi project can come through, come through with this, you know, and actually come th come out and and have the stuff, man. I'm rooting for you. I'm watching and I'm and I'm making sure I'm paying attention. And, and Nick, I mean, I'm, obviously you guys have a great team, but you know, you're a great spokesman for for the, for your project as well. Um, I I hope that you're able to come through with all this, and I am in the background rooting you guys on. 
I really appreciate it, Joe. Seriously. It means a lot. I'm for you. I'm humbled. Thank you. No, man. I mean, I, and I told you this before, like there's a lot of projects. I mean, I get at least one per day, right? A new yeah, one per day. At sure. least. You know, but sometimes I get 12 or 13 in a day. You know, it's just, it, it just depends on who, I mean, a lot of times I've seen them before. Somebody else from the team has, has come up to me, but you know, it's, it's not very often that I'm giving a lot of attention to somebody who writes me a message or I'm not, you know, saying that I'm not paying attention to everything, but I can't, I just don't have the time for it. You guys have done something really special. I think that you have the same vision that I have. And that is a, a world that has a bunch of people that are holding crypto in it. And unless somebody makes it easy and Coinbase has done a good job, but there's a lot of things that Coinbase is not doing and intentionally they don't have to, they've, they've got their niche, you know, Divi, I, I look at y'all as not just got big potential, but big scalability, you know, what are some things that you guys have in the big vision? Yeah. So, you know, obviously it doesn't stop with, with finance. I think once you, sure. once you can scale to a point where, where you're actually usable from like a merchant hold perspective, on, hold on, let me rephrase this. How big can yeah, this get? <laughs> well, if you think about the actual amount of money in this world, uh, which you kind of mentioned earlier on, it's trillions of dollars out there that need to be moving around at all times. So unlimited, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I don't expect that we'll capture trillions of dollars of market. Sure. I mean, I hope so, no, but that's great. what's out yeah. there, you know, I mean, and that's, for that too. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But the, the, the opportunity is endless and the person or the company that even starts to grasp uh, even a small portion of that yeah. opportunity is going to be in a really good position. And I hope Absolutely. it's us. No, uh, of course, you know, um, and something we had in a, in a private conversation, you know, prior to as we were getting ready for this interview after, you know, we had touched base about it. And uh, we'll give a big shout out to Cannon, who who did connect us on an individual basis. Um, Cannon's been a great member of CCT and a gr just great dude in general. Uh, but, you know, when we when we talked, you know, you did talk about Africa. You did talk about the opportunities that existed there in some capacity. You know, let's let's hear a little bit about that. Yeah. So actually just yesterday, um, you can check my Twitter for this. Uh, we started testing a, a real SMS based wallet, basically. So you can actually text SMS. I mean, like SMS. straight up, just basic text message. Yeah. Just send five Divi to your friend's phone number wow. and it yeah. works. Um, so yeah, if you, if you look at my Twitter, you can actually see the, the, the transaction on the real blockchain on our main net. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah. I'll have to look at that. You should have sent me a message because I'm, I'm yeah. I, I was not aware that you did that just yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was it was super random. It wasn't like a planned, um, you know, thing that we wanted to promote necessarily. Sure, um, sure. But that, really that cool. is, thank you. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know that, that it's super original. I know other projects, I'm sure, have SMS based uh, wallets, but it is a, a pretty serious necessity when it comes to accessing those those uh, sure. developing nations. Let's say yep. um, some places just don't have smartphones, and they won't have smartphones. But hopefully we can get them to a point where they can eventually afford a smartphone um, and bring that type of infrastructure to those to those nations. But um, this is this is the first step, in my opinion, is getting it on the on the feature phones. No, I, I think that's a, a great point. Um, you know, we often say, you know, and I'm, I'm somebody who does it all the time. Nick, and I'll say, you know, like, what about sub-Saharan Africa? You know, what about Venezuela? What about, you know, even Greece? You know, there's there's countries that have economic instability in some capacity, and, you know, they either need somebody else to step in and help them, or, you know, that, that you know, that maybe they'll fix it, but it might take them 15 years in some, in some instances. Uh, I I think about, you know, why it, it gets to this point. And, you know, of course, this conversation could last a year, you know, but... <laughs> but there has to be solutions because other countries are doing it in some way in some way or the other but you know when venezuela right now is there a more vulnerable country in the whole world than venezuela right and you know you don't need china or the united states or you know and of course i'm a proud american i mean i'm a, I'm a veteran i'm somebody who loves this country i love being able to walk outside go to walmart go to taco bell you know enjoy all the luxuries of being an american right and then you know coming home and, and watching my nfl football right i mean that's the right. average american and i mean not to be generic but i am that person i mean like i like walmart i mean i go there and i get, <laughs> I get the stuff i need right and when they added groceries a decade ago i was like oh my gosh now i don't have to go to the grocery store yeah, exactly. perfect <laughs> You know, but That's but funny. what I'm getting at here is is obviously is you know I, I don't need anything. I don't need Bitcoin. I don't need anything in crypto to make my life work. That already exists. 
But sure. in, if you're in Venezuela, you do not have that luxury, and you probably won't for several decades. You might be able to fix certain parts of it, but I can go to my bank. I can do all this. America is the standard, but it's really the luxury of humans. And yeah. nobody else in the history of humankind has had it as easy as Americans, period. There is no – I mean there might be another country that's doing things similar, but for the most part – America is the wealthiest country in the world. It's not yeah. changing anytime in the near future because everybody's in the same situation in America. You That's know right. what I mean? Whether you're in China, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in the United States, whether you're in any of the developed countries, quote unquote, um, we're all in the same situation. We're all using the same platform, printing money and bullshitting and pretending, you know, well, at some point the pretending is going to stop, you know, and, uh, and we'll hopefully have Bitcoin to back us up at that point. But going to my point here is that Venezuela does not have these luxuries right now. Right. And they may not even have the luxury of having internet. So cell phone service, which is about as, as basic of technology as you're going to get, that's still kind of a luxury. Uh, cause there are places in Mississippi where I live, you know, that doesn't have cell phone service. Um, but, but to my point is this, is that 100% Nick, you guys are offering the solution now with SMS. Yeah. I think it's, you know, everybody talks about banking the unbanked, but I think, you know, you actually have to take Text strides that. to, wow. yeah, it, that's really, that's really what it's going to come down to, uh, in those countries. So yeah, I hope, I hope this is a good step toward that. I think it cool. is cool. Cool. All right, Nick. Well, we'll round this up, man. Anything I missed, anything that I didn't touch base on that you wanted to mention? No. And I mean, I always end these things and I'm like, Oh man, I should have said this or that. But, um, you know, if, if anyone watching this has questions or whatever, uh, we are on telegram at Divi project and you can come, you know, ask me questions or, or where can they find you on Twitter? Blame me, whatever. <laughs> uh, Twitter is at NSAP productions and SAP productions. Um, and of course, Divi project is the, is the company handle. Of course. All right. So now we got to do a quick fire. And that is, I ask questions at the end that have nothing to do with crypto or if they do, it's very minimal, but they're okay. just fun, right? We got to find out about you. All right. Of all the people in crypto, here we go. This is to start a quick fire. Keep that in mind. Of all the people in crypto, who's been the most influential on you? Um, Andreas Antonopoulos, for sure. I, I could tell that was coming from earlier. Yeah. That, I, I wrote that this question already. All right. Yeah. Uh, humans have been around for 200,000 years. Um, give or take, right? A, a, a blink of the eye in the cosmic <laughs> in the cosmic time. Yes. All right. But of that two hundred thousand years, you know that doesn't encompass four billion years. So, have aliens ever? I mean, whether humans have been here or not, have aliens ever visited the planet Earth? I mean, probably. It seems like there are definitely some unanswered questions out there. Um, either that, or we were much closer to the stars than we are today as the yeah. universe expanded. Did we go to the moon? I think so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not part of that one. <laughs> no, I'm also of the impression that we went to the moon. I mean, people yeah, can I'm say what sure. they want. Like, it, we can go to the moon. Like, get over yourselves, people. We can go to the moon. There's a space station up there. I mean, there's, there's definitely, I think we've been there. <laughs> and I would, I would venture to guess that we've actually been to the moon more than we would ever told people, which. It's possible. You know, yeah. That's what I was like when, when moon haters are like, oh, we never went to the moon. I'm like, guess what? We're probably living on the moon right now, bro. Yeah. You know, like, know. Get, over, like get over it. Like, we've been to the moon. And if they wanted to shoot lasers to your house right now, you're just not that important. <laughs> but you know they could. All right. Next, right. next, next question is: what, What's your favorite type of shoe? Favorite type of shoe? Uh, athletic shoe. Adidas. Adidas. Your Adidas yeah. guy. Comfortable, sock-like, and light. Yeah, 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 I feel you. Actually, I don't own any Adidas. It's either Reebok or Nike for me. One of the two. But I love Nike too. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a loyalist necessarily. No, no, me, me either. Uh, I like Reebok because they have that new cushion. I don't know if you yeah. can put your foot in it, but it literally is like putting your head on a pillow. But for really, I'll try that out. Oh, they're dude. making they're making a pretty good comeback, dude. I'm, I'm there is not a more comfortable shoe than Reebok, but it's just not as cool to wear, right? So you know, if I'm going running, I'm gonna, which I haven't in several months, but um, but if I was, I, that's what I would be. Anyways, all right, two more questions. All right, I brought it up at the beginning, and I'm gonna ask you this now, even though I said it in, in the beginning as well. But Bitcoin is a political party. I'm not. I don't like the tribalist nature, to be honest. I think that Bitcoin is a political movement and it is revolutionary, but I find that becoming a maximalist of anything is detrimental to the overall goal that we're trying to, it undermines the collective. So, so would you want to say blockchain as a party? Yeah, maybe blockchain as a party for okay, sure. Cool. I can respect that. No, it makes sense. And I mean, I, I say, when I say Bitcoin, the context is typically blockchain, right? But no, but it, there is a, there's a big difference. There is a difference. And so yeah. I think that you answered that really well. All right. And 
Last one, and we'll leave it at this because, uh, you know, I've taken up a lot of your time, but I'm thankful you're able to come on, Nick. But can Bitcoin be a million dollars? Of course. Great answer. That's the best <laughs> one yet. Of course. Duh. Why not? Of course it can, right? That's not a uh, statement saying it will, but it can for sure. And I agree with that, by the way. So, all right, Nick, any final words, party shots? Honestly, thank you so much, Joe, for having me on. And and I, it was really, honestly, just a fun conversation. So, good. Uh, yeah. I'm, You're not just saying that because I told you that's what I wanted it to be. Right? Not, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Thank not you so bad. much, man. All right, man. Well, go enjoy your evening, brother. I appreciate you coming on, jumping on with us. Uh, look, good things happening for the Divi Project. If you, like I said, uh, tell them one more time where they can find you. Find us on uh, Telegram at Divi Project. All the social media is at Divi Project. And uh, you can find my personal. Though. Yeah, yeah. Just come come ask questions. And uh, we have a tip bot in there, so you can get some free Divi if you come say you were on watching Joe better, Blackburn. Better hurry up. There you go, bro. I like it. Way to plug it. Anyways, all right, man. I'll make sure I get you the link. We'll talk soon, everybody. Hey, look, Bitcoin Radio. WBTC, it's your cryptoverse. It's our job to take care of it. What are you doing? We know what Nick's doing now. You know what I'm doing. But what are you doing about it? Because if we don't do something about it, somebody else will. And we might not like what the end result is, right? So we'll see you soon. But make sure you're doing your part. And you know what? As simple as this. Just be able to explain what blockchain and crypto and Bitcoin, what they are. That's, that's, that can be as simple as you ever need to do. And if you're doing that part and you're you're spreading that message and you're spreading that education, then we're in a good space. You know, we got millions of people that are using Bitcoin, but how many people can explain it? All right. Until next time. See you soon.